In our last video, we had a chat with the operators. We met their leaders, Mags and William Black, and met their co-conspirator Lizzie. We turned their headquarters, the parlor, upside down and read very private, but revealing terminal entries that told us more about the histories of the leaders of that faction. Now, there is one raider gang left to meet, and that is the pack, led by Pack Alpha, Mason. The pack is holed up in the Brad Burton Amphitheater, which before the war was used to put on live performances. Now, it is a den of animals. Upon entering, we see cages to the right and a slave to the left. She's wearing an explosive shock collar, and she's called a pack captive. Looks like the pack is making good use of their slaves here. Despite the filth surrounding her, she's still trying to clean up. We find a pre-war concession stand. Inside, we see two Nuka-Cola racks. These are functional display racks where we can show off our Nuka-Cola collection. Sadly, they're not included in the settlement build menu, which is frustrating. I remember being really angry when I found these here, but I couldn't find them in my settlement build menu. At any rate, if you want to display your Nuka-Cola here in the Brad Burton Amphitheater, well, you can. We find mattresses and sleeping bags back here. Looks like the pack sleeps here sometimes. Heading out, we see the main stage to the west, but moving over to this cage area first, we see that the pack has a bunch of animals outside the cages and slaves inside the cages. It appears the pack raiders like to taunt these slaves. We see them banging on the cages, leaning in and whispering profanities. We can pick the locks to the cages if we want, and as overboss, there is no penalty for doing so. But even after opening the cages, we can't release the slaves. They still sit in their pen, rocking back and forth. Here we find another slave, sweeping around out here. And we can check in with a local raider to learn more about pack philosophy. Excuse me. You a sheep or a wolf? Because the pack only runs with wolves. Okay there, Socrates. Moving to the north, we see another cage. We can pick this one, but even if we do, the animals inside just stay here. Looks like there's a two-headed gazelle here, and human bones litter the cage. Moving out and heading north, we can open a red door to another section of the amphitheater. This appears to be a raider home. We find a chemistry station against the wall next to some pack graffiti and animals walking all around. There's a stim pack on a table in the middle of this hallway, right next to an ammo box. Nearby is another raider we can interview. Hi. It ain't easy keeping the zoo. We all do our part. More animal-themed dialogue. We can loot a red toolbox on top of this shelf right next to an ammunition box. Nearby, there's a first aid kit on the wall and... Huh. Oh. This is a still living feral ghoul, but they've duct taped him to this chair and then stuck a cushion on top of him. <laughs> he can sit in this guy. Oh, this is absolutely horrible. I'm surprised they didn't duct tape his mouth. Sure, they restrained his arms and hands, but it's the mouth I'm most worried about. This pathway leads to a bit of a delivery garage. Inside, we find more mattresses on the ground, more raiders hanging around and chatting about animals. <clears throat> Gotta chase what you wanna catch. After looting the Nuka-Cola Wild and some tickets on a nearby dresser, we see that this is a dead end, so we can turn around and head out. As we do, we pass by a large double door. This leads to the Nuka Town backstage. But before we head in through here, let's meet the leader of this pack, Mason. We find Mason by going down the pathway to the main arena. Here, we find a cage fight going on. <laughs> Looks like the pack members pit slaves against some of the animals, for sheer entertainment purposes, presumably. I waited a long time, and this slave seemed to fare fairly well. He's putting on quite a spectacle for the gathered crowd. As we approach the stage, we hear a conversation between Mason and one of his underlings. Can you talk to Mags or something? You said we ain't allowed to kill any of them, so tell me. Did you have to wait in a long line to see me? No. I walked right up there. Exactly. Most can handle their own without bothering me about it. Do you need help finding your place here? No. No! I can handle it. There's plenty of collars in the kennels if you can. More of this animal talk between pack members. When the raider walks away, we can have an interview with Pack Alpha Mason. Hey. Now that I get a closer look at you, 
Not sure I'm buying this new overboss thing. You gonna be a problem I need to solve? Slow down there, boss lady. We're just getting to know each other. I'll send you my resume and references. The f so resume. Whatever. Don't matter. We're all in this together. This can be good for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Sure, boss. We're gonna be one big happy family. As long as you care about yourself, you'll do what I tell you. Ha! You might make it out of here alive after all. Name's Mason, the Pax Alpha. This here's our side of town. You might be over, boss, for now. But I'm the boss of the pack, and it's gonna stay that way. Long as you don't go forgetting that, we're gonna be fine. Your people aren't gonna cause me any problems, are they? The pack does what I tell them. You don't get in my way, they won't get in yours. The pack? Fitting. You smell like animals. Ah. Never heard that one before. Let's work together, Mason. I'm not interested in ruining your gig. If that ain't a lie, then things might end up all right between us. I'm not here to make us friends. I'm here to make us some caps. I think we can all respect caps, if not each other. Look, it ain't like anyone's broke up about Coulter. Just figured on his replacement being, well, different. But Gage says you're the boss now, so you're the boss. You don't want to be over, boss. If I thought the other gangs would go along, yeah, I'd run this place in a heartbeat. Might have to, if you turn out to be a turd. At least it ain't Mags Black, that freak Nisha. Besides, you can't possibly be worse than Coulter. Don't worry. Gage knew what he was doing. Jury's still out on that. But ain't likely you're gonna be any worse than Coulter. I have big plans for this place. You'll see. Maybe you're the real deal. Well, we thought Coulter was the real deal, too. And he's laying in a pool of his own blood. Coulter was weak. Why'd you follow him at all? Been wondering that ourselves. Don't get me wrong, Coulter was definitely overboss. Not a man to mess with. And things were good in the beginning. Real good. But that was a year ago. Then Coulter went soft. Wanted to take stock in what we achieved. So what is it you want? Caps? Action? Something! Anything that's more than the sitting around we've been doing for the last year. Things could be worse. Trust me. I've seen it. No, we've all seen it worse. I think you're a bunch of ungrateful children. Careful there, boss. We ain't ungrateful. Just fed up. I'm listening. Sure, this place beats living in the holes we had out there. But it ain't the palace of caps we signed up for. Ain't none of us happy. Not even the disciples. And they're normally a chipper bunch, so long as they're drenched in blood. Things were going to hell fast, but Gage put the brakes on that, got us together, and promised he'd find someone to deal with Coulter. So, what's the real story behind Gage and Coulter? Hey, I only know what I've heard. Story is that Gage talked Coulter into becoming overboss. And he got you in here, didn't he? Maybe he likes people owing him. Maybe it lets him get things done without getting dirt on his hands. After Coulter went soft, Gage got us behind closed doors and promised he'd get someone to off Coulter. And you did just that. Might have been the whole point of the gauntlet all along. I trust we're done with the history lesson? Yeah, boss. Just trying to fill you in on why we're all so pissed off. You can trust me. I'll be a good leader. No offense, but you just got here. We'll see what you can do. I'm not Coulter. So that better not happen to me. Yeah, sure, boss. I get it. I do. We're totally willing to give you a chance. We are. Look, let's cut to the chase. You gonna do right by the pack? I hear you've been talking to the other gangs. What's the pack got over the other gangs? The pack are the meanest sons of bitches you'll ever meet. We do whatever it takes, and we're fiercely loyal. The operators will cut your throat as soon as they get what they want out of you. And the disciples? Look knows what those crazy bitches want. There's something wrong with them, and you can't trust someone who ain't willing to show you their face. Don't worry, you'll get your fair share of the caps. Sure, fine. But it ain't just about the caps. It's also about respect. If you want us at your heel, we expect to be top dogs around here. I intend to treat all the gangs equally. Ain't no two things in this world that's truly equal, boss. Everything has its place. One gang is gonna end up on top, and one on the bottom. 
It's a simple law of nature. Mason clearly respects us most if we respond to him with animal-like aggression, and he rewards us handsomely if we do so. If we faithfully choose the aggressive option at every opportunity, that's pressing right, whenever we have the option to respond, he gives us a reward after the final choice. Be a good dog and do what you're told, or you'll be put down. Oh there, boss. Not in front of my guys, all right? You've got enough to worry about without a dominant struggle inside the pack to deal with. You know what? I think we're not so different, me and you. I want you to have this. Consider it a token of our mutual understanding and respect. He hands us the Problem Solver. Increase damage after each consecutive hit on the same target. If that sounds familiar, it should. This weapon has the exact same legendary effect as the Splatter Cannon that we can purchase from Aaron Corbett in the Nukatown Marketplace. I covered that gun in my video on the Marketplace. If both guns are fully upgraded, they are essentially the exact same weapon. The only difference is that one costs thousands of caps and this one is free. We get it simply by choosing the right dialogue options with Mason. Like the Splatter Cannon, the wonderful thing about the Problem Solver is its furious legendary effect makes for a wonderful automatic weapon. Since the damage from each shot increases, we can use a weapon like this to quickly take down beefy opponents. One last thing before I let you go. There's always work to do around here, keeping the zoo in order. If you're ever able to lend a hand, drop by. Loyalty's a two-way street. And like with Nisha and Mags Black, Mason can give us Raider Radiant quests, but we'll explore those quests after we finish exploring the Bradburton Amphitheater. Heading north, we find a Nuka-Cola Victory next to another Nuka-Cola hiding behind a shrubbery prop, and we see two galleries on either side of the pit where pack raiders watch the fights. At any time, we can pick the gate to this cage, and we can even interfere with the fight if we want to. But if we do, the combatants never try to escape, and the raiders don't appear to notice. We even find a ghoulrilla in a cage up here, and picking the door has the same result. The raiders have turned the seating into a bit of a shooting gallery. We find mannequins dressed up and all sorts of cutouts set out. We even find one raider taking pot shots at them. At the top of one of these risers, we find a Nuka-Cola grape. With the arena explored, this leaves only one place left to explore, and that's to find out what's on the other side of those two red doors leading to the Nuka Town backstage. Inside, we go down a long staircase and turn a corner to enter a huge concrete backstage. Here we find animals and raiders walking around carefree. We can talk with this goofball over here. Oh, life's too short for Got a party like it's your last day, every day. A raider philosophy if I ever heard one. And the unique thing about this basement area is we find tons of paint. This is the place to go if you need paint for your settlement building. I ended up collecting so many cans of paint that I became encumbered. I had to put some back. We see dog houses in here and dog bowls filled with mystery bacon. Oh no, that doesn't sound good. To the west, we find another cage. This appears to be a home for pink flamingos, that's about it. Though we do find some produce in a bathtub. Talk about your good old healthy bathtub produce. Backing out of the cage, this place is just filthy. We see sleeping bags on the ground surrounded by billiard balls, a chessboard, antifreeze, some Nuka-Cola dark kids toys, gasoline cans, and some mystery jerky on a nearby cam cooler. <laughs> The mystery jerky and mystery bacon is unique to the Bradburton Amphitheater backstage. We don't find either anywhere else in the game. So once we loot it all from here, we can't get any more. Will we learn the story behind this stuff? Hang tight, we'll soon find out. These pack raiders are living in utter squalor. There is an elevated platform here with a gorilla chair next to a big bear. Nearby, we find a box with one purified water in it. And on the platform, we find one terminal, Mason's terminal, locked with an expert lock. 
After hacking it, we find some of Mason's notes about some of the other raider bosses. If you aren't Mason and you're reading this, better start running. In the first one, Mags, she lets her operators off the leash too often. Some of mine gone missing, and I'm sure they're the reason. Don't mind all that much. Cole's the pack of weaklings and morons. But if it don't stop soon, I'll need to start letting mine off their leashes too. Might get ugly. I'm seeing a bit of a pattern here in the food chain. The disciples prey on operators, killing them for fun as we heard in Dixie's holotapes. The operators prey on the pack, kidnapping them and torturing them for their own experiments. I almost get the impression that the pack is at the bottom of the food chain here. In the next one, Nisha. I don't know how she keeps her crazies in line. And what's with all the masks? I mean, yeah, my guys got them too, but they take them off once in a while. I ain't never seen a disciple without something covering their face. Well, not a live one anyway. Is that a hint that he has personally killed some disciples? Maybe they're not at the bottom. In the next one, Gage. Gage is running out of time. If he doesn't address this Coulter situation, one of us is going to do it for him. And it's likely going to be me. I wouldn't mind running this place. Mags, Nisha, and their crew might need to have an accident. Don't think they'd like taking orders from me. I'll need to think of something clever, or their guys are going to pin it on me. So before we arrived, it looks like Mason was already planning to take out the Raider bosses and claim Nuka World for himself. I'm amazed he thought that he could do it single-handedly. In the next one, Coulter, dead. Goodbye, ain't gonna miss you. In the next one, new overboss, not sure yet. Gonna give it a chance and see what shakes out. Best step up to bat, or there's gonna be a beatdown. I can't believe all it took was a damn squirt gun and Coulter went down like prey. Clever. Well, at least he's gonna give us a chance. In the next one, bored. Think I'm done with this stupid thing. Why did I even start typing this stuff into this machine? Now I need to figure out how to delete everything. Wait, got an idea. And in the next one, big huge reward. Congratulations. If you're reading this, come see me. I've got something really special planned for anyone able to hack my terminal. It's to die for. Well, I don't think anyone has fallen for this, mainly because we found it still locked when we arrived. Backing out of the terminal, we find more sleeping bags, scrap, junk, paint cans just laying about. There's a larger than usual giddy up buttercup on a nearby shelf. We can't loot it though, and it appears to be part of a ruined merry-go-round. We find some meat in a nearby grill, some jet in a nearby cooler, next to a cooking station, and then in the middle of this large room, we find two doors, one to the east and one to the west. Heading into the western room first, we see Christmas lights glowing from the ceiling. This must have been a changing room for the performers. We see desks and some mirrors against a wall. We find a few suitcases with minor loot and then lots of pack clothing. Of all of the Raider gangs, the pack appear to be less guarded of their personal possessions. We find necklaces, hats, armor, and weapons just scattered all over the place, free for the taking, including an interesting pack feather necklace on a nearby shelf. On the ground near to this shelf, we find a scrap of paper that's really easy to miss. It blends in with all of the trash scattered all over the ground. Rumor about missing slaves. Okay, I don't know nothing for sure, but I heard some talk about them slaves that went missing. Don't go saying you heard this from me, but I wouldn't eat anything that didn't come out of a box for a little while. Oh no. Nearby, tucked under a rug, we find another note. Note about missing slaves. I don't get it. A bunch of slaves go missing and no one gives a damn? Mason's always making examples out of people. One or two go missing a week. And heads ain't rolling? Something's going on. And this, I believe, may give us an answer as to where this mystery jerky and mystery bacon came from. These notes may be telling us that the pack slaughtered these missing slaves and turned them into jerky and bacon. This is confirmed if you have the cannibal perk. Both the jerky and the bacon have exactly the same stats, and they are modified by the cannibal perk. Rank 1 and rank 2 of the cannibal perk increases healing done by the jerky and the bacon to 25 HP, and rank 3 increases it to 50 HP. Mason, or some other raider here, possibly unbeknownst to the others, is making jerky and bacon out of murdered slaves. 
After looting a nearby footlocker, we see some lockers against a wall to the west, and here we find another note. H's note. Don't get yourself collared or worse, get even. But you gotta admit, giant wads of bubblegum shot out of makeshift cannons was pretty good. They must have been chewing that for weeks. But we can do better. I found a couple boxes of wonder glue and cherry bombs on my last run. H. What is that all about? On the ground in the rubble is a Nuka-Cola lunchbox, where we have a chance to get an iBot model. After looting the lockers, we can loot a foot locker on the ground, and then moving to the northwest, we can loot a Nuka-Cola on a nearby table, we find more jerky. We can loot a mirror, we find a box of bobby pins, and then turning south, we can loot more mirrors, a metal box, a plethora of pack helmets and clothing, and even more mystery bacon and mystery jerky. This must be a popular snack for the pack. On the final table, we find V's note. He's dead. I don't care what happens to me, I'm killing that jerk. Had to shave all the hair off my body, and I'm still finding that stuff wedged in places I never knew I had. Just looking at a pack of gum pisses me off. V. I see, so this was a conversation between V and H. I'm assuming that these pranks were between members of the pack, so they're pranking each other. We already learned in the operator's terminals that it's against the rules for pack to murder pack. They can only humiliate each other. Hence why this guy says, I don't care what happens to me, I'm gonna kill that jerk. After looting another footlocker and even more mirrors, we find another box of bobby pins next to a cigarette machine, a wooden crate in the middle of the room with even more clothing and armor, and with that we can head out of this room. Turning around, we find a tool case and a shelf against this wall, and on a rolling cart, we find a holotape. Stinking operators. Remember that operator I gave a nose job? Well, she came around with some pals, tried to get a jump on me. Now I got three dead ops in that dumpster, the one where we stashed those chems. Didn't mean to kill them, but when it's three to one, you gotta go hard. Ugh, they're starting to smell. Get a crew, a couple hacksaws, and some shovels. Meet me back there tonight. And for fuck's sake, erase this tape. He's acting weird. Sounds like the pack can hold their own against the operators after all. I don't believe this dumpster actually exists in the game. I looked for it, but I never found one with three operator corpses and a stash of chems. There's a jail cell to the north with a pack raider inside. We can pick the lock and open the door, but the raider doesn't appear to want to leave. I wonder why this guy is being punished. Maybe he is the guy who broke the pack rules and tried to kill one of their own. We find another door to the east with a pet mole rat walking around, and on a roll cart right next to the door we find another holotape. Buzz's holotape. I know you ain't talking to me no more, but hear me out. It turns out power armor ain't easy to steer. <laughs> Fell off a cliff getting away. Yeah, it's good and stuck now. Good news, though. I found your finger. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's yours. It's all black and weird looking. Anyway, thought you'd want to know. Ugh. I also thought you'd want to know they nicked me good. Not sure if I'm gonna make it. If you're gonna come get your finger, just, just do it while I'm still breathing, okay? I want to know things are good between us before I go. I miss you, bro. Despite being labeled Buzz's holotape, the subtitles call him Raider Man. There is more to this story, which we'll get to in a minute. After looting a duffel bag on the ground, we find boxes of 10mm ammunition on a nearby shelf, and Shorty's note on a desk. I did it. I took the mask of the disciple that kept coming around. It was just a normal mug under there. Not sure what I was thinking it would be, but must have really pissed her off or something. Now I got four of them weirdos stalking me. Why did I go and do that? We need to do something. They're giving me weird nightmares. Shorty. There's a box of 45 caliber rounds on a shelf, and then two ammo boxes, and finally an explosives box on the ground. In this room, we find a weapon and armor workbench, and even more mystery jerky on a nearby shelf. To the right of the weapons workbench, on the final shelf, we find another note. Buzz's note. Keep this to yourself. Found one of them Brotherhood of Steel outposts. Whole place was torn to hell. Bodies and ghoul corpses everywhere. Found a working power armor suit just sitting in there. All we need to do is find one of them glowy battery things. Think I know where I can find one. 
I'm gonna need help. You win? Buzz. And then on a shelf directly beneath this one, we find Buzz's apology. I know you said you ain't ever gonna talk to me again, but just read this, okay? How was I gonna know they were coming back? Thought they were all dead. I'm really sorry about your finger. I am. I only laughed, because what else was I gonna do? I laugh when I don't know what to do, okay? Look, I bet they don't even realize you lost it. I'm gonna go back and sneak in and look for it. I'm also gonna nab that power armor if I can. Buzz. So the holotape and these two notes puts together the whole story. A pack member named Buzz found a Brotherhood of Steel outpost where the ghouls had killed all the Brotherhood. He got his friend pack member to come and help him loot the place. But then either the Brotherhood or the ghouls returned and Buzz's friend lost a finger in their flight. Buzz really loved his friend and felt really bad. So he went back on his own, found the finger, and managed to take off with a suit of power armor. But he was gravely wounded, possibly even mortally. That's the end of his story, and we don't know what ultimately happened to Buzz. I think we can presume that he died. Also, I looked, I couldn't find a canyon with any power armor in it at all. And we certainly never find Buzz's corpse, or the suit of power armor that he presumably was wearing. This room connects to an adjacent room through a doorway to the north. Here we see a bit of a butchery. Or a veterinary clinic. Can't really tell the difference. We see two stretchers upon which are human remains and mole rat remains. On a table to the south we find a blood pack on a surgical tray. And a hollow tape. you go tell Mason. I told you that cow was trouble. She took off with all the cats. All of them. Let me tell Mason. Man, this is the last time I let your pecker risk mine. You go tell Mason what happened. You leave my name the f*** out of it. If you're still alive tomorrow, maybe we can still be friends. These raiders are really scared of Mason. He must really be formidable to maintain the respect of all of these raiders. On the table, we find a couple of Mirelurk eggs. Moving to the east, we find more mystery bacon in this butcher shop, along with another blood pack. Oh. We can loot some meat off of the mole rat corpse, and we see human entrails on the other stretcher. There is one open cage to the northeast. Inside we find a rotting Brahmin corpse, flooded in its own blood. And in a cage next to this... Oh, wait a minute. That bear is still alive. And we see the corpses of three settlers inside this cage. We immediately realize what happened here. The pack had a Yaogwai in this cage, and then handcuffed three settlers to the inside of it. The Yaogwai then had no problem tearing them to pieces. We even see him sitting on one. We find another corpse torn to bits on the ground here. Blood and gore everywhere. And all three settlers are dead. After looting their bodies, we can move on to the final cage. We find half a torso outside the cage and blood smeared all over the ground. After unlocking this cage door, inside we see a rabid dog lying on the bloody floor. We see another dismembered body and a traitor also handcuffed to the cage. These pack raiders just throw people they don't need literally to the hounds to watch them get torn to pieces for their own amusement. These guys are no better than the disciples. Facing west, we see more blood spatter on the ground. We can loot a Nuka Cola and some jet from a nearby container, but we see that this path is completely buried with rubble. There's another chemistry station here, I believe that's three we find in here, which I suppose they use to manufacture chems, and that's about it. On our way out, we see a Jangles the Moon Monkey and a Teddy Bear in one of the cola cars, and when done, we can head back up the stairs and exit the backstage. Now, we need to check in with Mason to see what kind of work he'd like us to do. Hey. <laughs> Come to slum it with us animals, or are you looking for something to do? Because I got something. What's up? I want to cause a little ruckus for our so-called friends, the Disciples. They got a Wastelander supplying them, but not for long. Take this shot collar, sneak up and slap it on when she ain't looking. Or beat her senseless and snap it on when she's down and out. Who am I up against? Just a fool. Should be easy pickings. I expect you to make it worth my while. The rules of the pack. You help chase down the prey, you share in the spoils. So yeah, you'll get some. Right up my alley. I was hoping you'd say that. With that, we start the quest, 
hollering outside the lines. This one is similar to, but different from the Under the Collar quest, which we did in my video on the operators. Instead of sending us to collar a raider or a gunner, this one sends us to collar a trader or a settler or a scavenger whom we find in a major city. This time I was sent to Diamond City, whereupon I found a scavenger walking around in the back of the city. Excuse me. There's something you want? How's it going? Um, fine. Do I know you? Now there are a few ways to go about this. I have this necklace that would look wonderful on you. Here. Nice try. I'm not an idiot. Or if we pass the speech check. Here. Okay, I guess. Uh, wait a minute. Help! You're property of Mason in Nuka Town now. Oh my god. Get going. However, if we do this, inside of Diamond City Guards or any other NPC, they all turn hostile and open fire. So to get away with this without detection, we have to pass a much harder speech check to ask her to follow us. Come with me. There's something you need to see. Uh, okay. Lead the way. She then follows us like a temporary companion, and we can lead her outside the city. She continues to follow us on the other side. Once outside, we can take her to someplace a little bit more private. However, if we try to take her too far, she eventually turns around and walks back to Diamond City. But if we dragged her far enough away from Diamond City, we could again convince her to put on the necklace, or we could always sneak behind her and force it on her. You're property of Mason in Nuka Town now. Oh my god! Get going. And as long as no one sees us, we're A-OK. -okay. Back at the Bradburton Amphitheater, we find another caged fight going on, this time between a ghoulrilla and a mongrel. And we can turn the quest into Mason. It's done. Welcome back. Well, you just missed the parade we threw in your honor. It's my job as Pack Alpha to render up the spoils. Here. Consider yourself spoiled. So, don't suppose you want to help me out with another little sum sum? What's up? One of mine's gone and got domesticated by some cluck and abandoned the pack. Must have forgot. We're pack mates for life. Need you to be my reminder. Who will I be facing? Just a fool. Should be easy pickings. Think I'm gonna enjoy that? Go get him. The sixth and final Radiant Raider quest that we can get from Nuka World is taking out the trash. This is similar to a permanent solution, which we did for Mags Black in my last video, but instead of assassinating another raider or some gunner boss, we have to go and assassinate a peaceful scavenger, farmer, or trader, whom we'll likely find in a major city. Sometimes it's Bunker Hill, sometimes it's Good Neighbor, but in this instance I was again sent to Diamond City. Back at Diamond City, I tried to find the scavenger, but she appeared to walk outside the city. I found her walking around an alleyway. <clears throat> Can I help you? How's it going? Um, fine. Do I know you? If you have anyone to say goodbye to, now's the chance. I, I think you're mistaking me for someone else. And yet, she doesn't run. Well, we could always just kill her. And we complete the quest, but doing so too close to the Diamond City guards will get us killed. So instead, we have an option to have her follow us. Come with me. There's something you need to see. Uh, okay, lead the way. And strangely enough, she's willing to follow us. We don't have to pass any speech options to lure her away. However, when we try to murder her... Even though I was far away, the fact that she saw us and had time to defend herself apparently was enough to alert Diamond City guards. So to be successful, I had to again get her to follow me, lure her far away from the Diamond City guards, and this time assassinate her from stealth. When done, I walked close to the Diamond City guards and they paid no attention to me. With the assassination complete, we can head back to Mason to check in. Chalk another one up for the... Well, I was gonna say good guys, but eh, <laughs> you know what I mean. Back already? Don't suppose you do things out of the kindness of your heart. So take this, and we'll call it even. The pack might need you for something else. What do you say? I think I'm gonna... 
pass on that. Oh, big boss lady has big boss lady things to do. I gotcha. And with that, we have gotten to know all three Raider gangs. We've interviewed every Raider boss, and we can now check in with Gage to learn of our next assignment. The overboss returns. Well, you're back in one piece. That's a good sign. Everything all peachy with our friendly neighborhood psychopaths? Sure hope you didn't promise them too much. I mean, going a little over the top is part of the game, but you don't want them holding it against you if you can't deliver. What comes next, Gage? Next, the fun stuff. They'll do what they're told, and that's all that matters. Oh boy, okay. Mind your own business, Gage. Haven't you figured it out yet? Your business is my business. I only succeed here if you do. All the gangs are on board. I knew you had it in you. Time to roll up your sleeves, boss. There's work to be done. This place is huge. Divided up into sections. Parks, whatever the hell they called them back in the day. We need to take them all back. One at a time. Every section we secure gives us a little more breathing room and more resources. You stake a claim, plant a little flag for one of the gangs, and that settles it. It's theirs, for good. Who gets what, that'll be your call. Whoever you hand it off to will appreciate it, but the others might get a little jealous. You know how it goes. Plant a flag. Are you serious? Dead serious. Look, you leave it up to anyone else, the gangs will all just fight over who deserves the space. A lot of these idiots can't read. So it needs to be as plain as day for them to get on board. They know what to watch for. I thought the whole point of having minions was to get them to do the dirty work. Yeah, yeah. Give it time. You still got to prove to them you're worth following, remember? Forget the rest of the parks. We've got enough space here. Oh, now come on. Ain't you been listening? That's exactly the kind of we heard all the time from Coulter. Trust me, we need the space. It'd be good to have a few less threats surrounding us, too. It's gonna feel good to be in charge. Yeah, sure will. Be real nice to have this place all under our control. So that's it. Nice and simple, right? Take a minute. Settle in if you want. And then let's get to it. And hey, we're in this together. So I might as well go all in. You want me watching your back? You just say the word. Why? What's in it for you? For the love of... Ain't you been listening? I'm the one that sold this whole idea to the gangs. Go south. It ain't just your head they're gonna want on a stick. I like my head where it is. So if I can do anything to help keep it there, I'm gonna. So, what's it gonna be? We doing this together or not? No thanks. I got this. Suit yourself. Change your mind. I'll be around. Tag along if you want. Might learn a thing or two. Oh, now this I gotta see. That sounds like a great idea, Gage. You got a deal. You're the overboss. With that, we get Gage as a companion. I already did a video all about Porter Gage, exploring all of his dialogue options and each affinity level, which culminates in attaining his unique companion perk. You can watch that video by clicking here. Now we have to clear all of the Nuka World parks, and then choose one of the three Raider gangs we've just met to take over the cleared park. This is a tough decision, as we'll likely upset any Raider gang who feels like they're being overlooked. I've already produced videos on all of the Nuka World parks, which I'll place next in this series playlist. When done exploring those locations, we'll check in with Gage yet again to see what our next task is. I publish many videos each and every week, so if you want to make sure you don't miss that next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a t-shirt shop with unique designs you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of both men's and women's sizes and in a wide array of colors. You can find the designs on other products as well, smartphone cases, mugs, posters, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon this week with the next episode.